Alright, I just thought I'd do a little video today, I don't know, the mood struck me for some reason about what I would call the best gun, quote unquote, in the world, the Glock 19. Now, one thing I have noticed is there is a tremendous amount of hate on YouTube for Glocks and in social media. Now, all those haters, they'll twist, you know, one thing haters do is they'll twist, they'll lie about reality, like I'm a LeBron James stan, and if you go on social media, there's like so many LeBron James haters. And the objective fact is they probably outnumber the LeBron James stands at least like three to one. But they're, they're always talking about, oh, look at the hordes of LeBron James fans. The horde. A any any group will do this. They'll, like PlayStation fanboys do this all the time. There's like 50 PlayStation fanboys for every one Xbox fanboy on the net. And they're always talking about the Xbox fanboys that are like mythical, you know. Or, you know any group does this so most of the internet hates glocks so they'll sit there and say oh those annoying glock fanboys you know they don't exist <laughs> you know there's, there's there's like 10 times more hate towards glocks than love for them and since there is that group that's in control that hates glocks will make it out like oh so many people love glocks you know because i saw what made me think of this was i saw a video the other day where a guy who normally has popular videos, he put out a video about, and, and he didn't name the gun, but he put out a video like, um, the one gun I trust with my life out of the box. And this is like a tactical guy, and, you know, his channel's about tactical ARs and stuff all the time. And it happened to be a Glock, you know, and he, he, he showed, he, he got a brand new Glock, and he took it out of the, right out of the box, and, you know, and he just talked a little bit about how it's the only gun he trusts to function perfectly right out of the box. So he took it out right out of the box, didn't lube it or anything, you know, did some combat drills, whatever, real quick. And, of course, it functioned perfectly, as you'd expect. And, you know, that was his video. And I noticed it had, a high, it had like, 20,000 likes, or, but it had, like, 2,000 dislikes. So it's a very high percentage. Most videos get like negligible dislikes, you know. Uh, if they get a thousand likes, they'll get 17 dislikes or something, you know. But this one had like 10% dislikes, you know. That, that's a very high ratio. So, and I know there was nothing offensive about the video, nothing stupid about the video. This guy gets hundreds of thousands of views on his videos, you know. Uh, you know, if he makes a video about a tactical AR, everybody loves it, all that. But because I know just because he, he he put in the thumbnail about the one gun I trust out of the box with my life or whatever, or one handgun, I think he said. Um, and then he didn't tell you what it was, and then you click the video and you find out it's Glock. Just because it's a Glock, it got a bunch of dislikes because there's all these people, oh, he's a Glock fan, boy, oh, I don't like Glock. So that just shows you the point that more people dislike Glock by far on YouTube than like them. And they, they have this bad reputation and this, you know, oh, there's all these Glock fanboys. But really, everybody's always talking about the Glock fanboys in negative light, and there's no actual Glock fanboys, <laughs> you know. Of course, there are a few, but not many, you know. So that tells you where the numbers are. The people with the numbers always pretend like they don't have the numbers like the other side has the numbers. So whichever side's saying the other side has the numbers is the side that actually has the numbers. So if everyone's saying, man, there's so many Glock fanboys, then that tells you that there's actually so many anti-Glock fanboys. <laughs> or that's the case that we have. But anyway, so I just wanted to point that out first. That there's a strong anti-Glock sentiment on the, on, on the internet. But I don't care because I'm just going to tell you reality. This is the best gun, I think, in the world, generally speaking. Now, why do I say that? Well, because there's certain things that a handgun can do that a rifle could never... Because it's compact and... and, and um, you know what I mean? Because it's compact and... Usable. Just dropped fired out the window there. Uh, because it's compact, you know. If if you is it almost if you could generally ask me in life, if you could have if you could keep one gun, you know, people always go through these survival, you know, prepper situations and like, what? Here's the twenty guns you need to be a prepper. Here's the twenty guns you need in an SHTF situation. You know, ten guns, five guns. You need your shotgun. You need your twenty-two rifles. But if you could just have one gun in any of those situations, I think you would probably always end up at this guy. 
or you know some sort of handgun. Why? Because one of the big things in an SHTF situation. Not sure how much we're allowed to swear on YouTube, so I'm not. <laughs> uh, is um, you're gonna need something to carry around near people. You know, there's likely gonna be masses of displaced people or whatever, and people interacting and stuff. And you're gonna need something to shove in your belt or whatever to keep yourself and/or your family safe. You know, and a rifle's not gonna work for that. If you're in a city, any kind of an urban or any kind of a packed. You know, any kind of a situation with a lot of people. So right off the bat, the only thing that's going to work for most of that is a pistol. And you know, what, what kind of advantages does the Glock have? Well, I mean, first of all, it's so reliable. Like, I don't believe, I mean, my memory could be failing me. But I've had this gun for, I think, about 10 years. I'm not even positive. It might be 15, now that I'm thinking about it. It's been probably 15 years, possibly. This is a third gen Glock. But there's not a major difference to the newest ones. I've had it somewhere in that 10 to 15 year range. And like, I can't remember. I'm not saying it's never happened. I can't remember. Now, granted, I don't shoot it just tons and tons. But I can't remember a malfunction with it. So as far as I know, it's never had a malfunction. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> These things just do not malfunction. Like, I was even thinking, you know, I, I always assume that reliable revolvers are more reliable than semi-autos, right? But in the case of a Glock, I was thinking, is that even true, you know? I don't know. It, it may be that the Glock is more reliable than a revolver. I honestly think so. I mean, they just, they're like watches. They just fire every single time, you know? I mean, revolvers have, have things that can go wrong because they have moving parts and, you know, the cylinder can get out of time or whatever. I don't, I'm not a revolver guy, so I don't know. But, but I know that you're talking about moving parts there. And anytime you've got moving parts... I mean, you got moving parts in a Glock, too, but... Anytime you're talking about major moving parts, meaning the cylinder has to rotate every single time, you know? I don't know, I just... I don't... I would always normally, you know, give in to the side that says that revolvers are more reliable, but the problem is that... What, what I've... You know, I heard it put well in an article once. The problem with the revolvers is... They have the upside of being more reliable. The downside is that you can't necessarily get enough rounds downrange fast enough. You know, that's where this clock or any high capacity semi auto. That's the, you know, you don't think of the downside risk of a revolver, which is you've got six. I mean, I guess there's some fancy, stupid, expensive ones that, that like only AK Marshall, whatever, it carry, no normal person would have. They have like nine shots or something, but. Generally speaking, you're talking about like six shots. That's any revolver that any normal human would own that's out in the streets, you know, that's not a 22. It's going to be six shots. So, you know, your risk there is you've got six shots, you've got a heavy double action pull, or if you're not, if you're not Jerry Mikulik, you know, you're not going to be able to get that, even those six shots down range that fast. This, you've got 15 shots that are very easy to get down range very quickly. So that's the downside risk of a revolver, you know, that people don't talk about. Is it not being able to get the lead out fast enough, you know, regardless of reliability. But, um, or enough lead fast enough. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this has a 15 round mag, I believe, and that's just great, you know. Um, it's just so much ammo, you don't really got to think about any reasonable self-defense situation. You don't have to worry about ammo, you know. I don't know where that line is, but I know like 8 rounds, I would kind of worry. 9 rounds, I would kind of worry. 10 rounds, I would kind of worry. I don't know where the magic round line is. Maybe 13 rounds, 12 rounds. Somewhere in there, I would start thinking I'm good, you know. 12, 13 rounds, I suppose. Now, I know it's not magic, but even 11, maybe. But 15, plus possibly one in the chamber, you know. You just stop worrying about having enough for any reasonable confrontation. Yeah, like I said, I bought this gun probably 15 years ago, somewhere in there. Never had a jam. Keep it under my, on my nightstand to this day, you know. And I've read a lot of things, a lot of debate about um, springs and whether they can... You know, I worried because I kept it for one time, probably five plus years, without even shooting it. Because there was a time there when I didn't really shoot. Um, I kept it for probably five to ten years with a under the bed with a mag loaded and sometimes chambered. 
So you read about springs, can they, can can you leave a load, the mag loaded for years at a time? And you know, I know Paul Harrell in here has done a video where he says he thinks that can it can have bad effects, and he's fired guns where the springs wore out over time, so that like either the hammer springs or whatever, so that after sitting in a closet for 20 years or something, they don't work. So I was kind of wondering if that was an issue with this Glock, and I still do because I, I, I leave it loaded and. Um, ready to go for such long period of time, probably years and years. Like I said, I think it probably sat under the bed mostly in fire for eight to 10 years at one point. And let me tell you, I've taken it out to the range a few times since then, you know, the few years since then, never a single hiccup or even a hint of a hiccup, you know? So I don't know, maybe for some gun spring uh, fatigue, I guess they call it, would be the actual term I'm thinking. Maybe for some gun spring fatigue is a thing, spring fatigue. But for Glocks, it doesn't seem to be if much of one, if at all. You know, I, I've I could literally kept this guy under my bed, locked and loaded for years, possibly 10 years. Like I said, I don't know the exact time frames, but it was a lot of years without firing a single shot out of it. Pulled it out, and it works like clockwork every time, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I've also seen another video on YouTube here that kind of convinced me that that's not an issue because he was basically making the point that within reason, if you don't store it in a really hot place and if you, that the springs under like what you call normal pressure will not fail on any gun really. Now if it's excessive, like it's, uh, I don't know what that is, but in their design, the magazines are designed where the springs are under normal pressure, you know. You know, and I guess this one caveat was if it's in a really hot place, which I think it's like 120 degrees and up, which pretty much probably is not going to happen on an inside gun. And, you know, so, yeah, anyways. But, yeah, what makes this Glock so great? Um, sometimes I think I'd rather have a Glock 26 because it's kind of the same but smaller. As far as capacity, you could always get the magazines to just stick out of the bottom. But I will say this gun is boring. Like, out of all my guns, this is, like, one of the most boring ones to shoot. It's just boring. I've had it so long. It's boring. You know, at first, the first, when I first got it, I thought they looked awesome. And I was all into it. That's why I got it. was, like, my first gun that I owned on my own, really. First serious gun. You know, after getting out of my parents' house and whatnot. But, uh... You know, at that time, I was in love with how it looked. But at, over the years, you know, it just gets to be boring. Okay, it's a gun. But again, sometimes I think about selling all my gun collection. And if I did so, the, the one I would keep would be this, you know. <laughs> this is just covers every base. Home defense, this is the best for home defense. I don't care what anybody says. Because the thing people don't take into it, yeah, an AR, people think that over-penetrates, or my 9mm carbine, although, although I love my high point and it's been very reliable, I don't necessarily 100% trust it for reliability. I mean, I do, but, but this thing I trust 100%, you know. And the main big advantage of this as a home defense gun, honestly, is that the portability. Because you can just take this anywhere. Let's say you hear a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Somebody keeps knocking, you know. And they're, hey, I need to, you know, or maybe hollering something. Maybe it's 2 a.m., you know. You can't take your AR to that door to possibly open that door, depending on what's going on, if somebody needs help or something, you know. You can take this, you know, you can shove this in your waistband and be good to go. You know, pull your shirt over it if you need to. You know what I mean? That That's the big reason. The, the, this is honestly the best home defense gun out there, in my opinion. Another thing that's often happened to me is, let's say I'll be sitting in the living room playing video games or something. And I hear maybe something in the backyard. Something, you know, it could be any kind of noise. And I'm like, huh, what's going on back there, you know? Well, sometimes I may, maybe I hear a fume noise. I'm like, man, is somebody back there? Oh, what's going on? So just to ease my mind a little, I may go in the other room, pick this up, take it, set it on the couch next to me while I'm playing video games, you know? And it's ready to go. It's sitting on the couch there, loaded and ready, or on the coffee table, wherever I put it within reach, you know? You can't do that with an AR or a 9mm carbine or any kind of rifle. You know, you can, but it's a big pain in the butt. Or a shotgun, even. You can't with a shotgun. Now, you... Maybe you go get your shotgun, but you put it, you know, and it's sitting next to you on the couch, really, or, you know, it's going to be unwieldy, you're going to have to, you know what I mean, it's heavy, you're going to have to pick it up, you can't pick it up rapidly, this, you know, it's just there, you can pick it up in a second's notice, it's very accurate, I forgot to mention that on the positives, this thing is very accurate, like, if I shoot my really concealed carry small guns, 
I can't hit shit with them, to be honest. <laughs> this thing, you know, 25 yards, 50 yards, whatever, it's it's a tack driver, you know? Very accurate. So, that's another big plus. Of course, it's not going to compete with a rifle for accuracy, but no handgun wheel. You know, so those are all the reasons. Like I said, it's boring, but I think all the time about, like, if I sold my entire gun collection, what is the one gun that I need, I would keep, that I couldn't do without? It's always this, you know? It's so versatile. It's so, it's compact enough that you can put it in a, I've even put this sucker in oversized pockets before, you know, and it's a Glock 19, you know, this, this is a, this is something you can always count on, that you know, you know, a truck gun, I want to talk about a truck gun, you know, this would be a great truck gun, even though people think of cheap guns in that capacity, because you know this is a lot of firepower that's always going to work very accurate you know the trigger you know another thing that makes the Glock so great is it's got that kind of double action trigger that I'm comfortable carrying around but you don't have any safeties for a while I had the Smith & Wesson 9mm right I don't remember what the model number was but it's not anything they make anymore they made it years ago and I I loved the way it looked I saw it on TV or something once I loved the way it looked now, I base probably too many things in my life based on liking how it looks <laughs> rather than than the quality or whatever, whether it be car or whatever. Um, so I love the way the Smith & Wesson 9 looked, so I bought one. But, I mean, it was just a pain in the butt because it had all kinds of weird controls. It was like a double, you could fire it either single or double action. You know, I think it had maybe like a decocker lever and I didn't pay enough attention to it or really know what was going on with it that much, even though it was my gun. And honestly, if the, in a shit hit the fan situation, I really wouldn't trust myself to know reliably how to shoot that gun. I mean, seriously, it sounds stupid and I'm, I'm that dumb, I'm that dense, but I mean, I would, I'm sure I would have been fine, but I would have been thinking like, oh, what, what, you know, how do you, you cock this, you... You, you know, it's got a round in the chamber. Do I, you know, what, what do I do here? What, what do I do that? You know, I don't, I don't remember, but it was just a complicated action. I think it had a safety as well on top of everything else. This, you don't have to worry about anything, you know. You pick it up, you pull the trigger. It has no safety, you know, other than the trigger safety. You know, honestly, and I'm a, I'm a... I'm a gun person and everything, and that Smith & Wesson honestly confused me with its weirdo action. Probably how, why they don't make it anymore. <laughs> you know, like I said, it had like a... It had a hammer, an exposed hammer. You could fire either double or single action. Like I said, I, might, I think it had a decocker lever. If that's what I'm thinking it is. It, it was just a pain in the butt, and you had so much shit going on. A safety, manual safety. This, you know, you don't have anything. You just... Man... Like I said, in the quality. I was just thinking about Glock and how, you know, sometimes in life you're always trying to save a buck, and it's me, you know. Save a buck here, save a buck. With Glock, I, I, I kind of admire something. Sometimes Apple, sometimes Glock, we're, they're not about saving a buck. They're about a good product, you know. There's something to be said for that, too. Glocks aren't even that expensive at all. You know, what are they, you could probably go in for 500 generally speaking, still. That, that's not crazy, you know. But you're going to pay for a good gun, and you're going to get a good gun, you know? I mean, there's something to be said for that, I'm not trying to save a dime all the time. And, you know, just thinking about how well-built they are, you know, and why they have that reputation of reliability. So, yes, I'll just say, you know, I know there's lots of guns and Glock copies that are just fine and everything, but it's hard to be a Glock. Like, if I was to get a SIG or something... I don't know that I'd trust it to be 100% reliable like this, you know, a, a Smith & Wesson M&P. I don't think I'd trust it to be 100% reliable like this. They're much less expensive, so that right off the bat probably tells you they're not as high quality, you know. I mean, an M&P Shield, I remember not too long ago, I, I had a chance to pick one up for 199 bucks, new. That was like a couple years ago, and they were doing some crazy rebates and this and that, but 199 bucks new, I could have got a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. You know, so I mean that's good. It's nice to be cheap, and I do think they're quality guns, just like the cheaper Rugers are quality guns and everything. But they're not quite Glocks, you know. So yeah, just making this video to say like everyone hates on the Glock and they want to point out the Glock's bad sides or whatever. But 
you gotta look at the good sides. And yeah, I'm bored. Like I said, this is to me almost like my most boring gun, you know, because I've just had it for so long. It's just boring. I don't really. I mean, I kind of want to shoot it now, but <laughs> normally I don't want to shoot it at the range that much. I don't. You know, I shoot my carry guns because I want to see how accurate I can be with them because they're very hard to hit anything. You know, I shoot my rifles because they're fun. I find shooting rifles fun. Uh, I shoot my single action 22 because it's fun. This thing, you know, what's the point really of shooting it that much? But and it just runs like a top, and it's just boring. But you know, like I said, I think all the time about how if I, if I sold my gun collection, or if I had to sell my gun collection, whatever the case may be, I would keep this bad boy. And it's it's small enough that it's kind of concealable. That's another beauty of the Glock 19. You know, I wouldn't want it. I would think there are better choices for everyday carry. But you know, you could in a pinch shove this in your in your pants or your waistband. Like I said, I've even put this thing in my pocket before. I like to put a gun in my uh, on me when I go out in the middle of the night to take the trash out. Sometimes it's a long story why that happens in the middle of the night, but uh, <laughs> you know, not that I'll ever need it. But you know, if I go out in the yard in the middle of the night, sometimes I like to be armed because you never know what kind of coyote or person or whatever could be out there. Um, I've stuck this sucker bear in my pocket before. It'll fit in some larger pockets. Um, yeah, so that's it. I just want to make it a, a video counter to all the Glock hate on YouTube. And people are not going to give Glock any credit. You know, I think that probably the best gun in the world, pretty much. If you're not talking rifles, I don't know if you can, you know, I don't know if you can say it's better than rifles altogether, something like an AK-47. I thought I like AK-47, just they're a simple, reliable, worldwide famous gun. But at least for pistols, if not any type of gun, you know. I'd take a bear on with this, to be honest. I mean, it wouldn't be the idea for a bear being only 9mm. But you know what, you got 15 damn rounds in here. <laughs> I guarantee you that it, this could take down most bears. Um, you know, and the reliability and the ability to get that ammo out fast is so nice with it. It's like I saw this video on here where this guy was um, talking about his perfect bear gun or some some crap like that bear gun, and he was all looking at a 44 mag revolver he had to go to Alaska, whatever, and he might need self defense against bears. And he ended up going with a Glock 20 10 millimeter, like 15 or 17 round something like that, 15 round magazine, whatever it case is. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Like, 10 millimeters is a pretty hot cartridge. Of course, it's not up to a uh, 44 Magnum. But, I mean, which one's going to be a hell of a lot easier to use? A freaking six-shot 44 revolver that you're probably cocking single action, you know, that, that has a huge kick and everything. Or a 10 millimeter that you're going to be able to get 15 rounds of hot ammo into that bear fast, you know? And I think it was said that, like, the... Swedish bobsled team or some crap, that, or Swedish, it was a dog, you know, but one of those Iditarod or type of thing, something, not a Iditarod, but in that vein, the sled dogs, that one of the, like, Norway sled, sled dog team or something uses those 10mm Glock 20s for polar bear protection, and like I said, it makes sense, I mean, you know, a 44 Magnum is one thing, but you're giving up a lot, you know, you're gonna have to do a heavy double action trigger pull to get multiple shots on target. You're going to have huge recoil if it's compact at all. You know, you've got tremendous muzzle button. You know, just a 10 millimeter Glock would be much better for bear protection, honestly. You know, though you might give up some one shot capability. You know, your one shot of 10 millimeter is not going to be as good as your one shot of 44 Magnum, but you know. You can fire a second shot within a millisecond with any decent semi-auto, you know, so one shot kind of goes out the window. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, if I had to face a bear, I, I know I would definitely prefer the 10, uh, the 10 millimeter, you know, 10 millimeter Glock to a 44 mag revolver any day of the week. Anyway, so that's just a video of, like, just bashing the people that bash Glock and, you know, not popular on YouTube. Oh well, they're the best, most reliable. You can tell I've shot a decent amount over the 15 years or whatever I've had. It's got some wear right there. It's got some wear all over the place, to be honest. with something going on here. So yeah, there we go. Glock 19.
And this, I would say, I, I count this as the best because it's the best form factor. It's the most common as opposed to like a Glock. Sometimes I do wish I had a Glock 26 because it kind of think I kind of think it'd be the same as this, but more compact. But you know, this is like the perfect mix size. You know, uh, you know what I mean? It's 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 compact, but yet it's a full platform. You can get your hand around it. You can get great accuracy out of it and get great capacity out of it. You know. None of the other Glocks are going to approach this as far as like uh, being an icon, you know. This is just an absolute icon of a gun.